Welcome back. Now, in this uh, lecture, we are going to continue our discussion we are having in last lecture on chain dimensions and then we will move to <coughs> a new topic on frictional properties of polymer molecules in dilute solutions, which basically talks about mainly the viscosity of polymer solution. Now, in in the topics, uh, we have completed our discussion on shape and size of polymer chains and then we also completed uh, deducing an expression for our understanding expression for freely rotating chain. Now, what we are going to discuss is how the chain dimension, the chain size namely the RMS end to end distance and radius of gyration varies when we introduce the restriction on bond rotation. And then we also will understand how the long range steric interactions affect the polymer chain dimension. And then at the end we will start uh, the discussion on frictional properties of polymer molecules in dilute solution. Now, just recap we had whatever discussion we had in last uh, lecture about the chain dimension, polymer chain dimension. For a linear polymer chain, we, we discussed that most of the polymer chains are flexible in nature and they form a random coil structure either in solution or in melt. And we used Gaussian distribution function to get or understand the end to end RMS end to end distance for that. And then if the chain or the backbone polymer backbone become stiff, then polymer the coil the random coil becomes more elongated and it is become worm like and if, if it is if the backbone becomes more stiff then ultimately the chain become like a rod. So, these are the possible shapes a polymer chain can take. In terms of size, we discussed a control length which is basically n multiplied by n is the number of bonds and l is the length of each bonds. And then we introduced, we said that because the random coil is always uh, fluctuating in because they have several conformation numerous conformation the coil shape is always changing. So, uh, actually you have the end to end distance between polymer uh, uh, in a polymer coil is always changing. So, you have to get a time average end to end distance we introduce the term root mean square end to end distance which is given by this. And then we also discussed radius of gyration again time average quantity which is the root mean square distance of the elements of the different parts of the polymer chain from the center of gravity of the coil. And you also found that there is a relation between the radius of gyration and root mean square end to end distance. So, if you find if you find one the other one you can get it from this expression. We discussed first the freely rotating chain how the size the end to end distance RMS end to end distance comes about and we found that that is n to the power half multiplied by L. And then we also discussed the effect of RMS end to end distance you know the effect of bond angle restriction on the RMS end to end distance. And then today we will start discussing on these two topic or in, in these two restrictions. So, this is what we found that for freely rotated freely jointed chain there is no restriction we got RMS end to end distance for free chain f as a subscript is meaning that it is a freely rotating chain it is given by this expression and when you have bond angle restriction we get this expression. Now, most cases usually 
the polymer having carbon carbon backbone. So, it has a theta between 90 to 180 which means cos theta is negative. So, as expected this will be more than the end to end distance RMS end to end distance with a restriction from bond, ang uh, bond angle will be higher than the end to end distance for a freely rotating chain and same as the radius of gyration. Most cases we have no tetrahedral bond angle is 109.5 degree in that case this factor comes out 1.4 times. So, basically the root mean square end to end distance for a bond angle restricted polymer chain would be nearly about 1.4 times 1.4 times of the freely rotating chains RMS end to end distance. Now, let us talk about the restriction on bond angle uh, bond rotation, rotation about the single bond and which we are talking about because this is this restriction comes out because of near nearby groups. So, this is this is a short range steric uh, restriction. Now, we start our discussion with a simple molecule of N butane and we found out how the conformations what are the conformations uh, this a uh, normal butane can take and how the potential energy changes with different conformations. What which is we know that the lower the potential energy the chances of that uh, being stable is higher. So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4 these are 4 carbon atom in N butane we are not writing the hydrogen groups here. Now, this configuration we can put in two types of conformations sawhorse projection or Newman projection and then in this case this one methyl group and four methyl group is trans to each other. So, we are telling this conformation as planar trans and we can show this conformation in Newman projection like this, these dots are C H 3. When these C H 3 groups are on the same side in the same plane they cease to each other then we have a planar cis conformation and this is shown by Newman projection in this. Obviously, this here because of short range steric interaction is lower this will be much stable much more stable than this is conformation where the short range steric interactions are higher between the two methane group. Now, in this case we are defining the dihedral angle is 0 dihedral angle is the angle between two planes one plane is going through C 1, C 2 and C 3. So, this plane 1, 2, 3 the plane going through these 3 carbon 1, 2, 3 that is one plane and second plane is between 2, 3 and 4. Now, in this case they basically lie one lie above this line another one lies below this line. So, we are telling that this is a dihedral angle of 0 degree and in this case obviously, dihedral angle of 180 degree. Now, some books some texts follow that this is 0 degree. Okay. So, do not confuse in this uh, course we are telling this is 180 degree and this is 0 degree because we will use this phi in the expression of RMS end to end distance as well. So, this is phi is equal to 0 and this is phi is equal to 180 degree. So, the end to end distance in this case distance between two ends two carbon atoms present in the ends at 3.9 Armstrong and in this case 2.6 Armstrong. And as we have you can understand that this is a more stable conformation than this. So, obviously, the end to end distance would be more closer to this compared to this okay. and if there was no restriction for the free rotation it would have been somewhere 
in the middle. Okay. If there are no restriction on bond rotation, obviously it would have been somewhere in between in the middle exactly in middle, but because this gives when you go from middle towards the planar trans conformation you get lower energy, lower potential energy whereas, if you when you go towards cis conformation you get higher energy. So, it is always likelihood that your end to end distance will be higher compared to when there was no restriction of rotation. We can show schematically how this potential energy varies with different conformation which we obtain by changing the dihedral angle. This one is the planar trans conformation which I showed because these two methyl groups are extremely apart they have the least potential energy and you can rotate the you are looking from front side. So, this is 1, this is 2, this circle is 3 and this is 4, these are the 4 carbon atoms. So, you are looking from front side if you rotate the C 2, C 3 single bond then you will get all this con other conformation. If you rotate if you rotate the C 2, C 3 on clockwise direction you will get this conformation. If you rotate the anti clockwise direction you will get this other conformations. For example, if you rotate this, this take this point and rotate 60 degree then this methyl will come here, this methyl will come here and this bond will come here and this bond will go there. Okay. Now, these are these conformations are e eclipse conformations and these three are staggered conformations and more specifically this is a trans conformation and these are Gauss conformations. Okay. So, obviously, the monomer chain or a butane will have in this case n butane will more likely to be somewhere here which will have higher distance between C 1 and C 4 ends. Okay. Now, if you can imagine if you now go from n butane to n pentane and then slowly increase the number of carbon atom to make a polymer then how how this potential energy will curve will look like. Okay. You can imagine that it will be more more towards this region the minima will be or the least energy would be for a larger polymer molecule there will be more such conformations and the lowest energy conformations will be around here you know will, will be around say 0 degree to 90 degree range. Okay. So, you can you can imagine that there is numerous possible conformations for a linear polymer. Now, that is very difficult to un, uh, you know get the end to end distance due to that uh, rotational restriction short range rotational restriction it is very difficult to get uh, theoretically. Uh, it is possible for simplest molecule which is like uh, polyethylene which gives this term. So, this is additional term appearing and this O is for the subscript is for that a end to end distance for a chain RMS end to end distance for a chain which has both bond angle rotation and also short range steric rotational restriction due to short range steric interactions. Okay. Now, as we said the least energy would preferred around dihedral angle 0 and other both the sides. So, in that case you can this term would be more than 1. So, this this term due to bond rotational restriction will be higher than 
the term which was for the RMS end to end distance where it has only bond angle restrictions. Okay. So, the molecules now we just talked about this, this theoretical number or this theory expression for this very simple polyethylene molecules. Now, if you have side groups, obviously this rotational distraction will be higher because the polymer will be much more stiffer than polyethylene molecules. So, rotational restriction will be higher and those situations become much more complicated and those are basically very difficult to get or impossible to get theoretically. So, what is done? Instead of getting expression for the contribution due to the rotational restriction for short range steric interaction, we have introduced a new term which is called steric parameter which take care of the who take care of the rotational restriction term. So, this was equal to this term for simple polyethylene molecule for a much stiffer molecules like polystyrene we cannot get such expression what we are introducing instead of this term we are introducing a steric parameter. So, you can guess obviously you can expect that this term would be higher than this term because this was for polyethylene molecule and this is for more stiffer chains. So, this term would be higher than this expression and this term is usually comes around 1.5 to 3.5. So, if you compare this dimension which is basically we are calling this 0 or zero, this O meaning that the RMS end to end distance for polymer chains which is both bond angle restriction and also rotational restriction around the single bond due to short range steric interaction and these terms we are calling as unperturbed dimension. They are 1.4 times and 1 divided by this time. So, it will be around 2 to 3 times. This was the expression for the freely rotating chain. This contributes about 1.4 times and this contributes 1.5 to say 2.5 times. So, this comes around 2 to 5 3 times. So, if there was no restriction no restriction in the chain of uh, no restriction of bond angle and bond rotation then whatever dimension or RMS end to end distance you would have got. In actually if we consider the bond angle restriction and also the bond rotation restriction we will be having the RMS end to end distance about 2 to 3 times more than that. Now, we the stiffness can be also um, measured by if we get this term. This term is basically the ratio of the unperturbed dimension divided by the dimension for a freely rotating chain. So, basically this terms gives you the increase in the end to end distance or in or increase in the dimension because of the steric restriction both bond angle and the rotational restrictions which means this is a parameter which predicts or which gives the idea about the stiffness of the chain. Okay. See in this called characteristic ratio. Okay. So, the higher this value you will the polymer chain you would expect would be much more stiffer. Let us compare few numbers for few um, this uh, numbers for this steric factor and character ratio 
for few polymers at different temperature. Now, obviously, as we discussed, we would expect polyethylene to be much less stiff than a polystyrene molecule. So, this, these are the steric factor and the characteristic ratio, they are higher than polyethylene. PMMA has a less bulky side group. So, it is expected to be lower you know stiff having low stiff lower stiffness than polystyrene. So, it has it has these numbers are lower than polystyrene. Now, if you compare different temperature, so you take polystyrene at 25 degree centigrade and polystyrene at 70 degree centigrade. Obviously, if temperature goes up, you expect that the restriction for single ball rotation would be coming down okay. because you have more kinetic energy because of higher temperature. Obviously, the rotational the, the restriction around the single bond would come down. So, polymer actually become less stiff and if you can you compare these numbers, numbers are also telling that the polystyrene is 2.1 here at higher temperature and characteristic is 9.2 compared to a temperature which is lower. Same is the case for PMA if you compare the number between 25 and 72, PMA is less stiff at higher temperature because the rotational restriction comes down as we increase the temperature. Now, look at this uh, number for polycarbonate, this uh, stiffness is even lower. Now, what is the use of this stiffness? Now, when you have a polymer coil or have a polymer substance, now if you impact, if you, if you have a substance, if you impact on that metric or on the polymer substance, obviously if the chains are flexible then it can absorb the energy you have produced you are you are supplying. So, it will not break and if it is very stiff obviously, it will break immediately or it will break easily as you, you can uh, inform your daily life example glass because glass is very stiff it breaks as soon as you hit it okay. whereas, if you have a rubber or a soft polymer if you hit it it will not break. Okay, it just absorb the energy because the glass chains are much stiffer compared to a rubber chains where the rubber consists of flexible polymer chains. So, they absorb the energy because the polymer can change the conformation and absorb the energy. Now, polycarbonate having lower stiffness given by this number. So, polycarbonate should be as we explained should be much much uh, more impact resistant polymer compared to say PMMA or polystyrene and which is a fact among PMMA polystyrene, uh, PMMA polystyrene and PC polycarbonate has much more impact resistant uh, property than the other two polymers. Now, so we so far we discussed that uh, how we uh, the chain dimension which is basically we are talking about the radius of gyration or RMS end to end distance varies if we introduce the bond angle restriction and the rotational restriction due to short range interactions. Now, we have to compare if you compare a, a polymer chain how did we derive this Gaussian chain structure the expression for the Gaussian chain remember we used one of the chain end in the coordinate x y z coordinate and and then went randomly did a random walk with fixed step length or bond length and then then using radial distribution function Gaussian um, that is to be found what is the probability that the other end would be at a distance r from the origin. Okay. Now, doing that what we what we consider that this 
polymer molecules are volumeless. We are when I am drawing this, there are in several interaction intersections. Okay, if I draw say like this steps vectors like this. These are the steps random walk if the polymer takes. Then there are several intersections possible, which is basically when the which is happening after several several steps, which is basically is longer. It is not immediately immediately two two of the segments are two of the bonds are overlapping with each other, but it can come back because volumetric chains are flexible it can come back and occupy the same space. So, now when we deduce this expression we did not consider that this these vectors have volume. So, what happened the same space in this model we consider that same space, space which are the intersection points can be occupied by the two, two, two bonds. Okay. But in actual sense if you have one bonds if you have say this is one bond and what I was doing in the model we were basically putting on top of it in the same on the paper itself and we were calculating the dimension. But in actual term because this has a definite volume you cannot put on the same paper these two cannot intersect okay, on the plane of paper there would be it has to expand okay, because this has volume. So, in real case in case of real polymer chain there are long range interaction these are long range interactions which cause the chain dimension to be generally higher than the unperturbed dimension. Now, long, long range interactions are coming because the fact that once a bond occupies a given volume in the space no other bond can occupy the same volume. Okay. So, if I have a bond here in the space the same space cannot be if I have uh, this this planes if you consider it as a bond then then you cannot like this uh, let this plane is a bond you cannot occupy the same space with another bond okay because it is occupying some volume in the space but in the model we did not consider we consider that this space can be occupied by more than one bonds okay so, once a bond occupies a given volume in the space no other bond can occupy the same space basically the presence of a polymer chain or polymer segment is excluding any other polymer segments to occupy the same volume. So, the term is used is excluded volume this is called excluded volume effect once uh, a space is occupied by a polymer segment the same space cannot be occupied by another segment. So, that is what we are calling the other chains are excluded other portions are excluded from that space we are calling that as excluded volume effect. So, obviously now if in the model was considering that these two can be overlapped in a line obviously if they cannot the chain has to expand little bit okay. or in other words the conformations which did which have least number of self intersection will have higher probability than the conformations which has more number of self interactions intersections. Obviously, the volume the polymer coil will expand due to this excluded volume effect. So, effectively the polymer size or the radius of gyration and the RMS end to end distance will also increase. Okay. So, in real chain the RMS end to end distance is actually higher than the unperturbed dimension. 
when we did not consider the excluded volume effect. We put a factor to equate them, now this has to be more than 1 and this is called expansion factor. So, if this is 1 then these two are equal, if, if there are more expansion then this will be higher than 1. Now, as you can think that this volume exclusion would be volume expansion or the volume exclusion would be higher wherever the polymer chain density is much more, because if the polymer chain density is more then the, the chances of that two segments or two bonds trying to occupy the same space is high. So, the expansion would be much higher in that compared to a region where the, the segments or polymer chain density is lower. So, we cannot that is the reason we cannot uh, equate uh, or put the same expansion factor in, in case of radius of gyration as well. So, we are uh, putting a uh, another expansion factor in case of radius and gyration. For a small expansion this can be shown theoretically that uh, a, a this uh, stay the expansion factor for end to end distance higher than expansion for factor for radius of gyration. And for large expansion it can be also shown that it is uh, approximately proportional to n to the power 1 over 10, n is the number of bond lengths. So, basically this expansion factor is uh, approximately proportional to the molecular weight to the power 1 by 10 okay, where n is proportional to molecular or molecular proportional to n. So, for large ex expansion we will use this uh, in future. Uh, so, please remember that for large expansion this, uh, this expansion factor is uh, approximately proportional to the molecular weight to the power 1 over 10. And we know we knew that uh, this unperturbed dimension was dependent on proportional to n to the power half. So, the real chain real n to n distance would be proportional to approximately proportional to this multiplied by this which gives you n to the power 3 by 5. This is approximately proportional to n to the power 3 by 5 the, the end RMS end to end distance for a real chain. Now, what, what happens when there is more than one chain? In real scenario if you are talking about a polymer solution or a polymer melt or a polymer mass obviously, there is no single chain there are many chains. Now, what happened in that case? So, if there are more than one chains there are more than one chains in real environment what, what will happen. Now, obviously, if, if you consider that this is uh, this is part of dimension and because of excluded volume this is expanding to avoid all the intersections okay self intersection it is expanding now if, what what if there was another another polymer here which is the case for real case okay in real case there are there are many polymer chains so if imagine this is another polymer chain now for self to avoid self intersections or intramolecular long range steric interaction self intersection is caused by the long range steric interactions they will try to expand now if they are trying to expand what will happen they will try to overlap with this chain okay if they are to expand obviously they will be try to occupy the space which is already occupied by this chain. Okay. Now, then there will be interaction 
they do not time because there is already one segment is present, it will not allow, it will exclude the, the, ch the portion from the other chain to come and occupy the same space, because this will exclude any volume from the other segments. So, obviously, the intramolecular long, long range interactions, steric interactions try to expand the chain, whereas intermolecular long range interactions are basically try to compact the chain and to bring into the unbottom dimension. Okay. So, there is two opposite effect when you have multiple number of chains. For if you can consider single chain, intramolecular interactions, long range interactions try to expand the chain to avoid the self intersections, whereas to avoid the intersections between the segments of different polymer chain, intermolecular long range steric interactions try to compact the chain and that is nullify in a pure. So, basically in, in, in a pure amorphous polymer this gets nullified and your dimensions become same as the actual dimensions become same as the unpart of dimension. So, in case of pure amorphous polymer the expansion factor becomes 1 because there is two opposite effect causing one intramolecular causing the chain to expand whereas the intermolecular is trying to cause the chain to compact. What happened in this dilute solution? Now, in dilute solution you have polymer there are not many poly when you have dilute polymer chain I wrote this uh, uh, this uh, two because we are talking about pure amorphous polymer there is no solvent. Now, in case of dilute dilute polymer solvent there is unlikely that two polymer chains will be so close. Okay. So, polymer polymer interaction will be this exclusion will be will be less or in lower probability. So, the interaction will be between polymer and solvent in dilute solution interaction will be dilute and polymer and solvent. Now, if there are if there are favorable interactions between the solvents and the polymer compared to a solvent solvent interactions obviously the chain will expand you can you can anticipate that if the the interactions between polymer solvents is favorable compared to the mean interaction between solvent solvent and polymer polymer the polymer will try to maximize the number of polymer solvent contact which means it will try to expand the coil dimension so that you get maximum number of polymer solvent interaction inter instead of solvent solvent interaction. So, if you have good solvent where the polymer solvent interaction is is favorable compared to a solvent solvent interaction then polymer chain will expand. If you have a poor solvent where solvent solvent in the solvent polymer interaction are not favorable then what will happen? Again the intramolecular intramolecular intersections or intramolecular long range interactions will try to expand, but on expanding it has to come in contact with the solvent molecules which the solvent molecule do solvent molecules do not like. So, they will try to compact the polymer chain. So, in case of a poor solvent the single polymer chain is try to because of excluded volume effect you try to expand whereas polymer solvent interaction because they are unfavorable they try to compact and when these two becomes equal the polymer chain dimension is become same as the unpart of dimension and you have you call that solvent as a theta solvent which basically nullify these two effect. So, good solvent chain expansion uh, the expansion factor is more than one if you have poor solvent chain contraction happen and if it is the solvent is such that the theta solvent where the chain contraction due to unfavorable polymer solvent interaction exactly compensate the excluded the expansion due to excluded volume effect and you get back a uh, the expansion factor is 1. So, the real dimension of a polymer chain becomes same as the dimension as 
unperturbed chain that means it is not perturbed by any other polymer or solvents this now you can justify the why this term unperturbed is coming because as if it is present alone it is not perturbed by any other external molecules whether it is a another polymer molecule or a solvent molecules. Okay. So, theta solvent again the theta solvent and if your amorphous polymer the dimension of a real polymer chain is same as the dimension of unperturbed chain. Okay, so, in, in summary if the solvent quality is good obviously, the miscibility is high the delta G mixing is less and if solvent quality is good in a dilute solution the chains will separate they will be isolated to each other and chain dimension or the expansion factor will be more than 1. So, real chain end to end RMS end to end distance will be higher than the RMS end to end distance for unperturbed chain and chi the polymer solvent interaction will be lower than 0 0.5 these are all interrelated. For theta solvent chi is 0 0.5 expansion factor is 1 chains are still isolated and gives free energy mixing now comes from only the combinatorial entropy which is basically small for polymer solvent system, but still negative combinatorial, combinatorial entropy is positive. So, it contributes negatively uh, you know it, it favors a mixing process. So, in theta conditions still the mixing is possible favorable and you get a soluble mixture of polymer and solvent. If the solvent becomes more poor or poorer it, it becomes the polymer solvent interaction parameter becomes more than 0 0.5 and chain starts segregating and it is just close to it is very close to your. So, basically the contact interaction is positive which is nullifying the entropy entropy favorable entropic contribution towards Gibbs energy the favorable combinatorial entropy towards Gibbs free energy. So, if they nullify is the polymer start precipitating and in case of non solvent when polymer segregates Gibbs free energy mixing is positive the polymer is insoluble and chi the polymer solvent interaction parameter is higher than 5. Now, what about this? in a non solvent what about this the polymer solvent interaction parameter becomes 0 0.5 but expansion factor you can now imagine or you can think cannot be lower, lower less than 1 okay because it's the unperturbed dimension if you're talking having a single chain the unperturbed dimension is because of the bond angle restriction and the bond rotational restriction now you cannot have a more compact chain than that. For linear chain you cannot have a situation where it is more compact than because this is inbuilt to the polymer chain you cannot compact then your bond angle has to be lower and your rotational restriction has to be lower. So, you cannot bring down the expansion factor. So, it, it starts precipitating with a expansion factor of close to 1. So, now let us move just have a brief discussion of the we just now we talked about whatever we discussion we have about chain dimension is mainly or mostly or all about linear polymer which is shown here this is a similar trend. Now, you can have a branches also you can have short branches and you can also have long branches now long branch long branches can have further branch from itself. So, it is a long chain branching with branches long chain branching with branches or you have a linear long chain branching here okay. or you can have a network now network have cross links point loose ends entangled this is entangled is basically entangled between two chains is physical entanglement there is no chemical cross linking here it is basically one chain is entangled with another 
when you call long chain long or short, how you distinguish between whether the branch is long or short? If the branch length of the branch is more than the entanglement chain length of the entanglement molecular weight or entanglement chain length, then what is the entanglement chain length is the length between two entangled portions. So, if the, the length of the branch is higher than the entanglement molecular weight, then we call that as a long chain branch. How you uh, uh, characterize or define the or uh, sort of gives the parameter uh, describe the branching? Obviously, the branched for same given molecular weight, if you have same molecular weight because of branches the size radius and gyration will be lower as you can expect. So, yes for the branch you know radiation gyration for the branch will be lower than the linear for the same molecular weight. So, this g would be lower than. So, if you can calculate these two you can get the extent of branching the lower is the value of g the higher is the extent of branching. Now, other branching parameters you can also define is uh, the intrinsic the viscosity of branched by linear we will have more discussion on that or the hydrodynamic radius of a branched uh, divided by the linear ones. So, basically if, it, if molecular weights are same then because of branches are present the chain polymer chain will be much more compact. Uh, so, the radius hydrodynamic radius or the radius of gyration or the viscosity will be lower compared to a linear polymer chain having the same molecular weight. And you can if you get this properties like viscosity or radius of gyration of these two then you can find out the extent of branching in polymer. Now, let us move to the next topic which is uh, frictional properties of polymer solution. We will basically keep our discussion limited to dilute polymer solutions. Now, we talk about frictional properties first things come in our mind is viscosity. Now, viscosity of a dilute polymer you can you have must have experienced that viscosity of a dilute polymer solution is considerably higher compared to its solvent. Now, that is because you have large difference in the size of a solvent molecule and the polymer molecule. Because of the size difference you get this large increase in the viscosity of the solvent and that increase the extent of increase by addition of a polymer molecule for a given concentration would be higher if the size of the polymer goes up. So, if you if you add same amount of um, polymers of different molecular weight in the same solvent at same temperature, then the polymer which have the higher molecular weight or higher size it will have the the solution will have higher viscosity. For the same for the same concentration the increase in viscosity of a polymer solution depends on the size of the chain in the solution. The size more size higher the size the higher is the viscosity as we discussed and the size in turns depends on the chain length or the molecular weight as we have discussed earlier. Chemical structures chain stiffness the more the higher the stiffness the dimension of the size goes up and the molecular environment and chemical nature you know how the what is the constitution chemical constitution of the polymer that determine and what is the solvent you are using that determines how good is the polymer polymer and polymer solvent interactions. The more the interaction between polymer and solvent the coil expands. So, you have large the size so large the viscosity. So, if you have more interaction between so if you have a higher size higher chain length obviously your size size will go up as we have seen that uh, we discussed just now the chain length goes up the molecular goes up the size will the size will uh, be higher. So, viscosity will be higher 
if change stiffness goes up the size will be up the viscosity will be up if there is more interaction between polymer and solvent the size will be up and the viscosity will be up now there are few definitions of viscosity you should know this uh, these are common names of different viscosities and these are iupac name these are uh, most still now the common names are used by many people actually more people uses this term common name than the upac names this is eta is the viscosity of the solution of concentration of a polymer of concentration c at a given solvent and given temperature whereas eta 0 is the viscosity of that solvent that particular temperature so this eta by eta 0 or the relative viscosity is given by the extent of increase in the viscosity by the addition of polymer at a concentration c and you these are the self explanatory these expressions which you can look at specific viscosity reduced viscosity inherent viscosities intrinsic viscosity is talked about the ability intrinsic ability of a polymer change to increase the 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 viscosity of a solvent so that's it gives us very important uh, parameter which we'll be using several times in determining the molecular weight so intrinsic viscosity relates to the intrinsic ability of a polymer to increase the viscosity of a particular solvent at a given temperature because it's intrinsic ability the intrinsic viscosity is very gives a lot of useful properties a lot of useful information and which will be utilized uh, in determine molecular weight and other things which will discussed uh, in in next lecture now there are two types of polymer chains can we imagine one is uh, free draining polymer chains where the solvent molecules when you when the polymer chain moves in a in a solvent in a solution when polymer chains moves in a solution if the polymer chains moves without the solvent molecules which are associated with this and the solvent molecule move past the polymer molecules then we are talking about freely draining free draining polymer molecules so the solvent molecules flow past each segments of the chain and you can think that it's dominate over rod like molecule if your molecule is stiff if your rod like molecule then obviously it, when it moves the solvent molecules will not be sticking to it it will flow solvent molecule will flow past each other and it happens even for flexible chain if the coil size is low and that is dominate for very short chains the other one is non draining polymer molecule which is the case for most of the polymer molecules so any any linear flexible any flexible polymer chains are more closer to non draining polymer molecule non draining polymer is molecule is where the solvent molecules within the coil coil polymer chain moves along with it so if i think this is this white is the column and uh, the coil and these circles are solvent molecules when the polymer moves it takes the solvent molecules along with it so you can imagine that this polymer coil in a solvent is like a impermeable sphere okay which consists of the polymer coil and the solvent molecules which are associated with the polymer chain and happens that happens for large flexible polymer chains long chains and this this polymer molecule can be represented by one equivalent this is a equivalent hydrodynamic per particle one has same friction coefficient of the polymer molecule okay so this is the case where most of the polymers we deal with we we deal mostly with flexible large polymer chains so if that polymer 
moves to a solution, it takes the solvent molecules along with it. So, we consider most of our flexible polymer chains is non draining and the polymer coil will be, will be thought as a impermeable spherical particles. Now, for this suspension of uh, this uh, rigid or non, in, in, non inter penetrating spheres, Einstein equation of viscosity of a suspension is given by this expression. Again, this is the viscosity of the suspension or the solution or this is, if you talk about because we are thinking the polymers as a hard particles, that is where the term suspension we are using instead of solution, but in true sense that is the solution. So, it, eta is the viscosity of the polymer solution, eta 0 is the viscosity of the medium and this is phi 2 is the volume fraction of the polymer chain. So, what we can easily show that uh, this expression would give uh, this expression. Now, what we will uh, do now, we will stop here uh, for this class and uh, uh, we will in the next lecture, we will continue um, our discussion uh, from here and uh, deduce uh, the expression for uh, intrinsic viscosity of flexible polymer chains in a dilute solution.